So Raoult's law tells us that if we add a solute to a solvent, that the vapor pressure of that solvent will decrease. And it depends on how much solute you add. The more solute you add, the lower the vapor pressure goes. And what we've got to ask ourselves at this point is, who the heck cares? There's got to be some reason for us to talk about this because, I mean, we're not going to in general care about very small changes in vapor pressure, but what we're going to see is that small changes in vapor pressure have very profound consequences with things as common as boiling points and freezing points. So we're going to make that connection now. First of all, let's review what Raoult's Law is telling us. Um, mathematically, it says, again, that as we increase concentration of solute, no matter what the solute is, remember this is a colligative property, that just depending on how much we have dissolved in the liquid, that that will lower the vapor pressure of the solvent, not of the solute now, of the solvent, okay? So we increase amount of solute, we see a decrease, a steady decrease in the vapor pressure. Now, what does that have to do with something like boiling, for instance? Well, let's take a look. Now, this is a diagram we've seen before, but it can be a little intimidating, so let's walk through this. First of all, I want you to ignore the pink line for a moment. Just look at these other three lines. This is a phase diagram, and let's suppose that it was the phase diagram for water, although, in fact, it isn't. In water, we'd have this leaning this way, but this is, in general, a generic phase diagram. Um, and so this is the liquid gas interface here in green for the pure liquid. This is the solid and liquid interface, and this is the solid gas interface in red here. And remember, this is the triple point, the point where all three phases coexist. Now, remember that the normal boiling point, the point at which we get boiling at one atmosphere, is the point at which the vapor pressure curve intersects with one atmosphere. At that point, we get boiling, as long as we're at one atmosphere, and this is the temperature at which that occurs. Now, look what happens when we lower the vapor pressure by adding a solute to the liquid. The pink line, again, shows the lower vapor pressure at a given temperature. And look what happens. This now intersects the one atmosphere line at a higher temperature. That insists that the boiling point, the normal boiling point, is now higher than it was for the pure solvent. This is what we refer to as boiling point elevation another colligative property, a property that does not depend on the chemical nature of the solute, but it does depend on the chemical nature of the solvent. It depends what we're talking about boiling, okay? But not about what we put in it, only about how much we put in it. The more we dissolve, the lower this drops, the further we push the boiling point out, the higher the boiling point becomes. So an example of that that you're all familiar with is antifreeze. Well, this also could be called anti-boil. It has the exact same effect. In the engine, we dissolve some solute, the antifreeze in this case, into boiling water. And we're going to change the boiling point of that solution. We're going to lower it. So let's do that right now. In fact, let me read the, the temperature. On this thermometer is about 98 degrees uh, right now. And so we know that that would be 100 if we were at exactly one atmosphere. And so we'll go ahead and pour in a little bit of this and I'll pour in a little bit more there. And you'll notice the boiling stopped and I can look at the temperature. Now initially my temperature drops a little bit because I'm adding something that's going to absorb some of the heat. But when this thing comes back to boiling again, we'll look at the temperature and we'll see that in fact the, the boiling point has in fact increased. So we'll let this thing increase while we keep talking here and we'll come back to it. But again, the notion of antifreeze for an engine is simply, again, an example of using or exploiting a colligative property. What we're doing is taking a solute, putting it in water in the radiator, and that increases the boiling point of the water. We could do the same thing with any number of different substances. Anything of which, as long as it dissolves in that water, it's going to change the vapor pressure of water. And in fact, a number of different types of substances have been used in the past uh, in engines as far as um, in, in this way, by raising the, the boiling point. Um, now, I mentioned that this also has to do with freezing. I mean, after all, this is called antifreeze. And 
actually let's see we're getting back to our boiling point again here and now our temperature is just about 105 degrees so we've raised our temperature a fair bit in this process by adding again a little bit of a solute now again about freezing same idea here if we dissolve something in solution what we're going to do just like with boiling is we're going to stabilize the solution Remember back to Raoult's law, due to entropy, we stabilize the liquid phase that makes it a little more stable than the vapor phase that caused us to have to work a little harder to get it to boil. The same thing's going to be true about freezing. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for us to freeze it. We're going to have to go to a little lower temperature. Let me show you how that works. So once again, same diagram as before, our phase diagram here. The pink line once again indicates the ideal solution, whereas the green line indicates our pure solvent. When the vapor pressure drops, we said that the boiling point increases, and also notice what happens to the triple point down here. Notice that the triple point actually decreases in temperature. Again, simply because we're lowering this curve. As the triple point drops down, that ends up causing this solid liquid interface also to shift over. And as a result, the point at which we get freezing at one atmosphere has shifted to a lower temperature now. Bottom line is this, as we make the solution more stable by adding our solute, we make it more difficult to boil and more difficult to freeze. In other words, we have to remove more of the, the thermal energy before we can finally get it to freeze. Once again, because we are making the solution more stable by increasing its entropy or the entropy of the, the system at least. So we describe that in terms of a mathematical relationship for both boiling and freezing. They look almost identical. Delta T refers to the change in boiling temperature, in this case Tb. The change in the boiling point, that means the difference between the boiling point of the solution and the boiling point of the pure uh, liquid that that is equal to a constant, this is called the boiling point elevation constant times concentration. Now, just to, to cause you grief, we're using concentration units of molal in this equation, not molaire. So unfortunately, this is not moles per liter, this is moles per kilogram of solvent, okay? Um, but again, the important thing to see in this is that the change of boiling point is directly proportional to the amount Again, that tells you it's a colligative property. Likewise, the freezing point depression is a constant times, uh, again, molal. The higher the concentration, the lower the freezing point drops. Notice the minus sign. So our freezing point is decreasing, whereas our boiling point is increasing. Now, let's go to a table that describes various different boiling points and freezing point constants as a function of solvent. Now remember, a colligative property is independent of solute, but it's going to depend on the chemical nature of the solvent. Different solvents boil at different points, and as you might expect, their constants describing how much their boiling points change also are going to be different depending on what the solvent is. So for instance, uh, water down here at the bottom, we have a boiling point elevation constant of 0.51. Notice that that's only about half the size of ethanol, for instance, which has got a, a much more pronounced um, effect. In other words, we're going to see a more sensitive change of boiling point for ethanol than we did of water. Our, our boiling point constant, again, that describes that relationship between concentration and uh, change in temperature. Likewise, we can talk about the freezing point changes that we're going to see for such a system um, for a range of different solvents in this case. And listed in red here are just the different boiling points associated with these different solvents. Okay, so again, it's these numbers that we're going to look up that we're going to use to make this connection between how much stuff we have in solution and what happens to the boiling point. So in a moment, we'll go ahead and do an example of a problem where we make the connection between boiling point or freezing point change and concentration. And in fact, what we're going to do is use that information to determine a molecular weight of a substance.